Now you can work with um, keyframes on timelines also. Uh, while it's on a timeline, so if I make this bigger by scaling up and down, with uh, up and down on the D-pad, um, then while it's along, while the playhead is over this object, or over this gadget, that gadget is powered. And that's basically how most gadgets work. You can put all the gadgets on a timeline and it'll be powered and unpowered at the right times. If I put that there, then I can make a keyframe putting it at the start and another one putting it at the end. And then I can edit this one, tweak that one, and give it a linear blend or ease in or ease out or ease in and out. So ease in and out would be like slow at the start and slow at the end. You can also add the, that blend mode by using L1 and X on the gap between them and just like cycle through them by uh, pressing it more and more. So what is actually happening uh, during these parts here? We can find out by having them affect um, a couple of value sliders. So uh, if we put them on there and uh, one on there. So this left one is going to move that value slider to one and the right one will move the value slider to one. So now we can see what how these are being powered and unpowered and things like that. So the first one starts off, if we actually um, resize this just width ways with L1 and right on the D-pad, that scales into the time. So now you, you go even further, even far enough to see the fra individual logic frames. So there's 30 frames a second for the logic. So you can see 30 columns and you can time things really precisely like that. Um, now, if we drag the playhead along, we can see how that's affecting things. So at the start, uh, this one, this left one is fully powered. And at the end, it's not powered at all. And it kind of ramps down. And the next one ramps up. Um, and that's basically how all um, animation works. It just blends between these by powering one down and powering the other up. So that means when this is powered 25% and that is powered 75% when the uh, when it's all the way over here, it's averaging out what that is recorded and what that is recorded and that's what you end up with. So um, to get it to loop properly, you can like situate these, copy the first one to the end and um, have that blend as well. And then when it gets to here, that's the same as being here and then it will start looping. So that works perfectly fine. And you can see the uh, on these stripes, if I move this down here, if you hover over a set of these keyframes, this, this can have like as many keyframes as you want all blended together. So when you hover over one of these or you select it, then you can see this uh, line of how it will be animated. And it rep it's, represents the timing of this. So if I... Um, go to a diff different timing so this will ease in um, and I'm hovering over here you can see the little uh, marks uh, these are the marks of time it's moving slower here just in those tiny little positions posi position changes and then it's getting faster and faster until it gets to the end little blob and it has a blob at the start and at the end and that's ref reflected if we just play time then it gets faster and faster until it gets to the end. And um, you can also use up and down on the D-pad on while hovering over this uh, blend to make it more and more pronounced. So if it's not very pronounced at all, it will just be slightly faster at the end than at the start. And if we scale that way up, then it will be like really sudden right at the end. And you can affect that affects the uh, the strength of that previous keyframe. So the previous keyframe affects the blend to the next keyframe effectively. Uh, so you can use that to kind of give uh, subtlety and nuance to how that works. So what I can do is just extend this one and then I can grab the end with R2 and the start with R2 and just make it longer and then it'll do that animation and hold it at that position until it drops off the end like that. Now, if you move the end of the timeline halfway through a gadget, 
uh, then normally the timeline will just power itself off when it gets to the end. But if you have it wired, if you wire into the power and you're still sending it power, it will stay on and uh, anything that is kind of hanging off the end like that, so it actually continues over there. So this gadget is hanging off the end and that gadget will still be powered if it, if the timeline is still powered. Um, now if we go once uh, and we power off, then normally it powers off right at the end. But even in once mode, if you power it on, then it'll get to the end and stay on. And then you can do what you like with it like that. Now, a, a useful thing about the keyframes animating it this way instead of using the ramp, you can pause it halfway through. So if we use a switch to wire into the playhead speed, the playback speed, uh, then while this is on, it's at 100%. While it's off, it's at 0%. So it will effectively pause it. So if we play time, then we can pause it there and it will retain that position and the blend and everything between those two. Whereas if we did a similar thing, but we used slow power up, then it will keep powering up even if you pause it because it doesn't matter what's on here. What matters is it's trying to get to full power. So it's going to ramp up to that full power over that time. Uh, so that's, uh, so that those two different ways are useful in different situations. Now let's add another position. So let's add one over here and move it over there. And we'll add the blend over here. So now we see there are three dots and they're linked by um, the positions of the actual keyframes. That's what those little extra glowy bits do. But it also is a curve instead of just, just straight lines. So now if we play time, it's following that kind of wonky curve. So if we make that even more pronounced, you can actually see in real time how that's affecting the curve. So this corner here is completely smoothed out. This is because this smoothing setting is on by default when you make a new keyframe. So if I turn smoothing off for this one, then it's just completely ignored that. So now smoothing this, this part isn't affected by that part at all. Um, but if we added yet another one down here, uh, this part is still affected by that part. So uh, as it moves down here, it's trying to angle itself to move over here next kind of thing. Uh, but then on here, it's ignoring it entirely. So when I play time, this corner won't be smoothed out because this one isn't prepared for it. But then this corner is smoothed out because it's got the smoothing on. So again, it affects the next one on. So uh, it's in, instead of it going round and smoothing out to smooth out the next corner, it's not doing that at all. And then this one has smoothing on. So for the next one, next corner on, it's affected the uh, the line it's going to move at. Also, while editing a keyframe in one of these sets, you can use L1 and left or right to go between them, which makes it very easy to kind of tweak like the line of it and then remove this one and move that one down. Or if you, you're doing stop motion, uh, things like that. And it's in 3D too, of course, so you can uh, add that over there and move this forwards. And if we uh, turn smoothing on for that again, then we've got this 3D kind of spirally thing going on. But then when you make this not linear, if you make it ease in, which means the timing will be off. So it still follows that curve. But then at this point, it suddenly slows right down and then has to ramp up its speed again. So if we play time now, it's smooth, but then it has that kind of jerky bit in the middle because of this uh, here. So if you want it to stay smooth and the timing to stay smooth, then you want it to leave it on linear and then it'll uh, do its job better. But something to note is it doesn't affect, smoothing doesn't affect uh, settings. So if I, if I put this to red and then I had another one moving it to green and another one to blue, 
it, it still has um, smoothing turned on, but it's not a location, so it doesn't really affect it. Um, it just blends between them, and there's no smoothing to it. I'd like to thank Evil Key Mao, Martini TDK, VGA Port Authority, and all of my other supporters for making this tutorial possible. Check out tapjars.com to find out how you can support me in helping Dreams creators. Thanks for your consideration, and I'll see you in the next one.